Welcome to the fish reproduction, the first topic in Becoming Aquaculture Expert Part 3. In this section, you will learn about fish reproduction from selecting brood fish to spawning and larva rearing. By having this knowledge, you will be able to restock your own culture. Would it be nice if you have control over your fish stock instead of relying on external sources which might incur additional costs? As we already know, the demand of wild-caught species for food and ornamental purpose have been increasing over the years. So due to overfishing, the stock of these precious species have been depleted due to insufficient time for them to breed and less age variables to reproduce. Over the time, we keep on harvesting younger fish for human consumption. This practice has led to reducing the number of older fish in the wild. And old fish is really important for the species because they are supposed to be in prime condition to sustain and replenish the population. By the end of this course, you can apply what you already learned here to any type of fish species. This knowledge can be applicable from your small pet fish to as big as commercial fish. The reducing of natural population and the decreasing of old age fish will then contribute to the reproduction problems in wild population. This is actually a study done by University of Washington who found out that older fish in the population have more years to reproduce and when they are trimmed away from the diversity, the problems might arise as low frequency of reproduction were observed in younger fish. So when only the juveniles were left and adults were taken away from the society, it will affect the stability and diversity of the ecosystem. So how did the study of fish reproduction begin? The study of fish reproduction has long been described in a thesis from Henry Van Wilson back in 1891, whereby he described the fertilization of black sea bass from eggs to adults. From there, the discoveries of other species reproduction methods have been growing and increasing, hence the aquaculture expansion. This has resulted in increasing efforts to produce aquaculture species in the hatchery and various techniques have been developed towards this objective. As I've said earlier, there are various reasons why learning the application of reproductive technologies in aquaculture is important. Firstly, by doing so, we could potentially improve the production of high-value species, not only food fish but also ornamental fish. Farmers who opt for breeding their own aquaculture species could increase profitability while preserving the species' genetic line. Besides, we will be able to restock the native species in wild population and it is a good way to conserve the almost endangered species due to overfishing. So what kind of environment or physiological factor that would trigger the fish to spawn? The reproduction mechanisms in fish are triggered naturally by the environmental factors. The cues from the environment will trigger hormonal change within the animal which is stimulated by pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is situated on the ventral side of the brain, below the hypothalamus. It produces, accumulates and stores the gonadotropic hormones which plays an important role in ovulation. Several environmental factors that involve in gamete maturation and spawning, which include photoperiod, water temperature, water quality, water tides or moon cycle, spawning substrate, nutrition, disease, and presence of other fish. However, in captivity, the environmental cues might be lacking, in which case delayed the egg's maturation, or worse, did not produce ovulation and spawning due to the absence of gonadal steroid from the gonad. The pituitary gland in the brain is responsible to stimulate the hormonal change in animal. The major hormones responsible for reproduction functions are gonadotropin releasing hormone or GnRH which regulate the release of gonadotropin from the pituitary and gonadotropin releasing inhibitory factors or GnRIF or commonly known as dopamine which inhibit the release of gonadotropin from the pituitary. And the final one is gonadotropin, which release the gonadal steroid from the gonad, 
particularly follicle-stimulating hormone FSH and luteinizing hormone LH. So, first of all, spawning will be triggered by environmental stimuli that I've listed earlier. When the condition is appropriate, the brain will be triggered. The hypothalamus, which is located at the base of the brain, will release GnRH or dopamine depending on the environmental cues. If the GnRH is released, you will then travel to the pituitary gland and stimulate the release of gonadotropin hormone into the bloodstream. When gonadotropin hormone reaches to the gonad, it releases gonadal steroid, either 17 beta estradiol from ovary or 11 alpha ketotestosterone from the testis for inducing final maturation of the gametes.